what is IPEF? IPEF stands for the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. IPEF was launched by the United States on 23rd May 2022. Who are in the IPEF? IPEF members include 14 countries, Australia, Brunei Darussalam, Fiji, India, Indonesia, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, Philippines, and Singapore. 14 IPEF partners represent 40% of the global GDP, 28% of global goods and services trade. IPEF is built on four pillars. Pillar 1 on trade, Pillar 2 on supply chains, Pillar 3 on infrastructure, clean energy and decarbonization, and Pillar 4 on tax and anti-corruption. Despite the United States' promotion of IPEF as a worker-centric framework, it is far from being true. The U.S. claims IPEF is worker-centric and comes with the upskilling initiative to provide training to girls and women in IPEF countries. This technological upskilling initiative driven by big tech automatically put women in the decision-making process and guarantee their digital rights and security? Definitely no. However, the initiative involves 14 big technology companies in the U.S. which have been involved in a series of labor rights violations in their practices as investigated and documented by EPWLD. As part of IPEF threat killer, digital economy in IPEF will be space championing big tech's favored policies. It is working around cross-border data flows, sustainable growth of digital economy, developing digital infrastructure that will only benefit big tech while leaving women prone to exploitative data extraction and online gender-based violence. Women do not need their identity to be mixed and steered with an IPF digital threat agenda deemed as inclusive when women are not heard, considered, and explained during the negotiation rounds. They are only targeted as market opportunity and data mines. Economic growth is the main objective of the digital threat agenda over democratization of digital space that is safe, accessible, and equally beneficial for women and minorities. The U.S. Indo-Pacific Economic Framework is designed to intensify the trade and investment monopoly in rich mineral and resource countries in the global south. And the IPEF itself will contribute to the expansions of economic extraction activities in these countries for the sake for energy transition agenda and only benefiting the multinational corporations uh, in the developed countries. It also undermines the people's rights through the accelerations of land acquisitions and deforestation, including the destructions of marine ecosystem, which ultimately marginalize the rights of affected uh, communities, especially vulnerable groups such as women, small farmers, small fishers, indigenous peoples, and workers. Uh, so the IPEF will only create more conflicts uh, without any clarity on the protections of human rights and environment including the remedial actions for the people on the ground. Therefore, we urge the government uh, of Indonesia and other Asian governments to not join IPEF and ratify it, including the bilateral critical mineral agreements with the U.S. The IPEF is the United States geopolitical tool to contain and deter military, economic, and political expansion of China in the Asia-Pacific region. The IPF includes five of the U.S.'s major security partners in the Asia-Pacific region, which is the Philippines, Thailand, South Korea, Australia, and Japan. 
members of uh, the Quadrilateral Security Cooperation, namely Australia, Japan, India, and the U.S., are also within and negotiating within the IPEC. So while it is marketed as an economic agreement, it is actually an, also a military and political tool used by the U.S. to gain access, control, and influence in the Asia-Pacific region. This means heightened militarism in the region, which will impact women heavily by affecting women's access to resources, their jobs, and livelihood. Militarization in countries in the Asia-Pacific region, including increased presence of foreign military troops, U.S. military troops in the region, will also lead to greater exploitation, sexual abuse, and other human rights violations by the U.S. and foreign troops against the women of the Asia-Pacific region. As women in the region, we must resist the IPEF. Aside from public statement and speeches, the workers have no direct access to contents of the framework which they say is for us. How can we ensure that IPEF will be positive for workers if many details are absent in the public discussion? Scope, enforcement, incentives, sanctions. Working people are not in the loop when it comes to these substantive questions. Absent of basic guarantees for transparency and robust public and congressional input, these negotiations could undermine women's human rights. History tells us that capitalist agreements have never worked in favor of workers, women, farmers, and marginalized groups. Stop IPF now. WLD is the leading network of feminist organizations and individual activists in Asia and the Pacific. Our 295 members represent groups of diverse women from 33 countries and territories in Asia and the Pacific. Women's human rights are achieved and sustained when autonomous feminist movements exist and have an enabling environment to work. Development justice and the realization of human rights can only happen when marginalized women are empowered to lead policy and legal debates and determine solutions. Engagement with women themselves both at the grassroots and the policy-making levels is needed to bring a feminist approach and perspective to their advocacy. 